I'm Christy Kniff. I'm the voluntary curator at the Irish Workhouse Museum, located at the Irish Workhouse Centre in Pertumna. You're welcome uh, to this virtual tour of our museum. Uh, what I plan to do here is to share with you some of the artefacts that we have here in the museum and also initially to explain to you what the museum is about, why we actually established the museum. Well, the museum itself is in place for the last couple of years and uh, its purpose really is to collect the material remains, uh, not alone from Portumna Workhouse, but from other workhouses and workhouse situations uh, around the country. Uh, the material remains or artefacts that we have on exhibition here help to tell the story of the Irish workhouse and also tell the story of the inmates and the people who lived here and the people who worked here. We don't have uh, many artefacts in the country as a whole, but we are looking here in Portumna to have quite a good collection now at this stage. Many of the objects we have here are from other workhouses and uh, as we progress in our work here at the museum, uh, we're finding that more and more people are actually donating material to us for our collection. So we really appreciate that. Um, one of the things that we're very proud of is that we actually received a grant last year. We received a community heritage grant from the Heritage Council that enabled us to purchase new state-of-the-art museum standard glass cases. And we made another application this year, 2021, and we're delighted to say that we have been successful in that application. So that's allowing us to proceed with the second phase of the museum here. Uh, the initial phase is located in the uh, women's workroom downstairs in the women's quarters. Uh, this current phase that we're working on is actually in the uh, nursery, which is adjacent to that. So join me for this little tour of the workhouse and I hope that you enjoy it. This is the women's quarters of Pertumna Workhouse. Our museum is located in the downstairs section of this to the left of the doorway. This photograph of David Broderick, Claire Dial and Donald Burke and myself was taken earlier in the year as part of a promotional piece that we undertook with uh, the Connacht Tribune. This is one of the things that we're trying to do with the Irish Workhouse Museum is to promote the museum itself promote the wider workhouse centre and to draw greater attention uh, to what we have on offer here. These three objects are on display in the Irish Workhouse Museum. The knocker on the left originated in Gort Workhouse, so helps to tell part of the story of that workhouse. The key in the centre is a spare key that we have uh, for the main door in Pertumna Workhouse itself, uh, while the latch on the right actually came from Toom Workhouse. So all three artefacts uh, are important in the telling of the story of those workhouse. This object is our most recent acquisition at the Irish Workhouse Museum. Mary Kearns and her husband Jimmy on the left can be seen handing over the ladle to Dolores Sauché, a member of staff here at the Irish Workhouse Centre. Uh, this ladle was used in uh, Ennis Workhouse and it was retained by the Sisters of Mercy and Ennis. They were the people that were charged with looking after and administering uh, to the poor. Here we have the ladle matched with a fork, all telling the, the story of dining, cooking and eating in the workhouse. As we know, the ladle came from Ennis workhouse, while the fork here on the right came from Galway workhouse. Uh, the fork itself is missing one of its uh, tines. We're not sure whether it was actually a toast fork or whether it was a fork used uh, for lifting meat uh, from the pots. Regardless, these two and other objects help to tell the story of dining and eating in the workhouse. This photograph was taken in 2020. Shown here are Paddy Clancy and Brian Kenny helping us to lift our famine pots onto the new plinth. This is a large wrought iron fire guard from Ballinasloe Workhouse. 
It was donated to our collection by Sean Larkin from Kiltarmer. Sean's uncle acquired two of these at an auction at the workhouse in Ballinasloe many years ago. Sadly, one of them was stolen from the farm, uh, but Sean decided that the other would be best preserved by placing it at the Irish Workhouse Museum. Uh, it's shown on the left here, over a fireplace in the nursery. And recent research has actually shown that these fire guards were in the nursery in Ballinasloe. Here we have Kieran Tuhi, uh, manufacturing and making dividers for some of our displays. In this instance, he has actually made uh, a butterfly shaped divider that allows us to display four different statues in a way that somebody can actually photograph them without uh, picking up on the object behind. This is a ceramic bedpan that we purchased uh, from an antique dealer in Dublin. As we can see, it's stamped South Dublin Union. So we know that this came from the South Dublin workhouse. That is now St. James's Hospital in Dublin. So this is a perfect artifact for our collection. This is an original object from the infirmary in Pertumna. In its former use, it was used as a nurse's medicine station. This would have had a double leaf on it and would have been locked and the medicines would have been kept in it. We're using it today as a display cabinet. The top had been missing, so we replaced the top with glass and uh, we have um, bottles and other objects that were recovered from the grounds beside the infirmary on display here in the cabinet. So it's been given a second life, if you like, but it's functioning both as an object or artifact itself in the museum, but also as a display cabinet. This ceramic plate was donated to our collection. It was made by Arco Pottery for the Irish Freedom from Hunger campaign. It bears the legend, for I was hungry and you gave me food. Christmas 1964. The following year, 1965, Gorta was founded as the Irish National Freedom from Hunger campaign committee at the request of the Food and Agricultural Organization of the United Nations the committee was founded under the auspices of the Irish Department of Agriculture and Fisheries. We have a number of religious objects in the museum. All of these came from workhouses, which is interesting. Uh, obviously, the link with the uh, Sisters of Mercy and other uh, nuns in the workhouse themselves brought uh, a stronger religious focus, if you like, uh, to bear within those buildings. The statue on the left is a statue of St. Joseph. It's missing his head. Uh, that's the way we found it. But that actually came from the boys' uh, dormitories in Pertumna Workhouse. The statue in the middle also came from Pertumna Workhouse and interestingly had been taken away by somebody for safe keeping and returned to us uh, for our museum. Uh, that's a, a statue of Gerard Magella, St. Gerard Magella, a saint who was uh, canonized in 1904. Uh, Jared Magella's primary function, I suppose, as a saint is for the protection of pregnant mo mothers, uh, unborn babies, and babies generally. So it's a very important item to have in the workhouse. This would have been used uh, within the infirmary, we presume, here in Pertumna by the Sisters of Mercy as one of the devotional objects there. While the statue, the little child of Prague on the right, actually comes from Galway Workhouse. And uh, generally you find that the child of Prague is missing his head, <laughs> like the other two statues here. And in this instance, we can actually see that the head has been taped back on with um, plaster. So it's quite interesting to see that. Uh, we have several other objects of a religious um, nature as well in the workhouse. We have two small miraculous medals that were found in the men's yard uh, when we were undertaking works there, and also a, a larger statue from Galway. These three objects were found in Pertumna workhouse. The two in the bottom are goose quills, which would have been used during the, the Victorian period as writing instruments. The one on the top is slightly later um, and comprises of a steel nib pin. 
This set of museum standard exhibition cases were purchased last year through a community heritage grant received from the Heritage Council. This is the second phase of our museum, located in the nursery in the women's quarters. We have been allocated further funding this year, 2021, uh, to purchase extra exhibition cases and also to develop storyboards that will help us tell a bigger story here uh, of the objects within the museum. These are some of the exhibition cases purchased last year, which the Community Heritage Grant. Um, in these particular cases, we have a small exhibition of Charles Dickens related material. And of course, Charles Dickens was very closely related with the uh, Victorian workhouse, and uh, many of his stories were related to the workhouse. For example, Oliver Twist is one such story. And the little case, single case on the right there, we can see some of the uh, characters, some of these cream jokes from Oliver Twist. Uh, this is one of our really cherished objects within the museum at the Irish Workhouse Centre. It's an original stove from the infirmary here in Portumna Workhouse. The two pictures we see on the right here uh, are a pair of uh, nameplates. The one at the top bears the monogram of Musgraves of Belfast, the manufacturers of this uh, stove. And the one at the bottom is uh, for W.K. Fail and Company, Parsonstown. Parsonstown is now Burr in County Offaly. And uh, the Fails were the suppliers of the, uh, the stove here to the workhouse. What's interesting here is that this has survived right through the history of the workhouse here in Fertumna. It was originally in our infirmary. And uh, what we're actually looking at here is a convective heater. Cold air is drawn in at the bottom of this heater or stove, uh, warms as it goes up, to, rises up through the tubes, flows out of the top, and is able to heat the infirmary area without any dust or ashes. So it's a perfect um, heating device for an infirmary. This is um, a military button with the Irish harp and the uh, initials IV for Irish volunteers. This was found upstairs in the girls' quarters here in Portumna Workhouse. We know that there were soldiers billeted here during the years of the emergency. These are a pair of pennies recovered from the men's yard during a cleanup. The one on the left is a Victorian penny from 1897, and the one on the right uh, is an Irish penny from 1968. The Victorian penny is interesting because uh, Victoria was the monarch uh, that was in power during the years of the famine, during the initial years of the building of the workhouses here in Ireland, and uh, during the early years of the 20th century. This exhibit comprises of five cream jugs donated to our collection here. They uh, depict characters from Charles Dickens' novels. The character in the middle there is Mr. Bumble. Mr. Bumble was the beetle connected with the workhouse. These are books and novels by Charles Dickens. It is our long-term aim to develop an exhibition within the workhouse relating to uh, that whole Dickensian workhouse era. This is a penny token from Birmingham workhouse. It dates to 1812. Inmates were paid for their work in some workhouses, but they were actually paid in tokens. So once the inmate had gathered 240 of these tokens, he could actually then go to the workhouse master and be given a pound note uh, in place. Here we have four coffin handles uh, that are on exhibit in our museum. These were originally in Pertumna workhouse, had been taken away by somebody for safekeeping and were returned recently to us to exhibit. We also found uh, some fragments of coffin breastplate under the stairs in the, in the infirmary. All of this indicates that coffins were being assembled here at the workhouse. Here we see one fragment of the breastplate from a coffin. Nothing speaks more about the people than the artifacts that they left behind. In this instance, we have five mugs uh, 
Four of these are from Lagrange workhouse, one of them from the Trumna workhouse. We have four enamel mugs, which are of the later period, and we have one tin mug in the centre. This tinware bowl was found under the floor of the infirmary. The bottom has rusted away over time, but it's still an important object here in Pertumna to uh, tell some of the story about the people themselves. We have a number of artefacts in this display case. We have two mineral water bottles, referred to as cod bottles, and we have seven marbles. What was interesting about the cod bottle is that it actually had a marble in the neck uh, to seal the bottle. And often children would break the bottle in order to be able to recover the marble for playing. In this instance, uh, the bottle on the left is intact. We can see the marble in place. Uh, this was donated to our collection. The one in the middle, the bottle there in the middle of the shot, is actually a bottle that was recovered from Galway Workhouse. And we can see that the top has broke off the bottle and that the marble was extracted. The uh, marbles on the right that we see here, uh, those seven marbles were all recovered from Pertumna Workhouse. Now, we were never sure whether children were allowed to have ties in the workhouse or not, but these do suggest uh, that kids were playing with marbles here in Pertumna. But what's interesting as well, that in Gresden Hall uh, Workhouse and Agricultural Museum in England, that marbles were recovered from under the floorboards upstairs in the Bayes quarters. So this suggests that the Bayes here in Pertumna were also playing with marbles. This exhibit consists of a cardigan made here in Pertumna Workhouse in the Pertumna Knitwear factory. This factory was set up here by Oscar Zimmerling, an engineer who worked with Siemens on the Shannon scheme here uh, in the 1920s. I hope you enjoyed this short overview of what we are doing at the Irish Workhouse Museum. If you would like to follow us on Twitter, do so at museum at the Irish Workhouse Centre.